so we looked at uh, yesterday we looked at noise noise and uh, resistors noise and mosfets triode region and uh, saturation region we looked at the flicker noise the thermal noise and the gate noise okay so now <clears throat> just two more points which i wanted to make about noise one thing is be careful about this so let's say this is your noise path spectral density okay you have to be careful about this is the this is the two sided spectrum quite often you also use the one sided spectrum okay which is just this guy folded over to the positive frequencies so when you work with graphical uh, analysis you tend to use two sided uh, spectrums spectra okay when you use circuit level calculations you end up doing uh, using just uh, single side to give you an example the um, is 2 ktr the noise of a resistor if you consider negative frequencies but typically in circuit calculations we tend to use 4 ktr okay so we just tend to look at the uh, negative frequencies because we never uh, calculate with negative frequencies okay so to get the right noise numbers you tend to use uh, folded over spectrum okay that is one thing so that's number 1 number 2 uh there was a question uh, yesterday about uh, the um, series to parallel conversion we did from parallel to series now it is fairly broad band it is not necessarily narrow band but the one thing to remember is we did make a one assumption which is uh was it 1 over gg <clears throat> right we assume that this is approximately okay and remember that q is a function of frequency so it is not as bad as just taking single values because q may end up being larger than one over a wide range of frequencies so it's not necessarily narrow band but it is definitely not valid at all frequencies okay and the third one was flicker noise okay so we looked at the uh, path spectral density of flicker noise right <coughs> so of course we noted a number of things but one thing to note is so if you have n mosfets versus p mosfets quite often you will see that the k value for p mosfets is lower than that for n mos for uh, some specific device reason some process reason bury channel that's right okay so what you'll find is several processes you'll find that p mos uh, transistors have lower flicker noise than n mos transistors but that is something which is very process dependent i have given you the circuit model you can go test it for yourself you can try to even take a transistor of a particular size p mos and n mos of the exact same size bias it at the exact same current see which one has lower uh, uh, lower noise okay it might be true for this process i don't know okay you that's something for you to find out okay now the other thing is we also wrote it in a slightly different form okay so another thing to note is that obviously it's proportional to omega t squared so when you go to faster and faster faster processes the flicker noise usually tends to get worse okay and of course you also know that gmp is well less than gmn so if you have to choose so let's say you are deciding to uh, you are starting to design a circuit 
for most circuits, you have the choice of designing an NMOS, K, uh, NMOS circuit or a PMOS circuit. Let's say you're designing, designing an amplifier, an LNA, okay, or, or an oscillator. You have a choice of designing it with completely PMOSs, completely with NMOSs, maybe mixed NMOS, PMOS. So all those things, you know, these two things will go into that particular decision. Okay, there are cases where I have seen cases where you don't want to use NMOS mainly because of this noise. PMOS, uh, let's say in the case of oscillators, for example, in some processes, not in all, in some processes, PMOS oscillators tend to be better than NMOS oscillators. Okay, in other cases, in the case of LNA, you may or may not be worried too much about flicker noise, so you may tend to use just NMOS all the time. So that is up to you. So you'll have to evaluate it when you when your project is uh, LNA project will be announced next week. So you you can you can evaluate it. So you can compare GM, compare flicker noise, compare thermal noise for both transistors, and decide for yourself which you which uh, circuit you want to use. Okay. Okay. So let's I guess uh, go to today's class. So we are going to look at two port noise theory. Okay, so let's take a noisy two port. Okay, and a noisy source. Let's we we are we are going to assume that the source is noisy also. So you can show that in general this can be written. So what you can do is you can extract two parameters, two noise parameters from the two port. Okay, to represent the noise of the two port at, at its input. Okay, one is the one is a noise voltage, other is a noise current. And this now this two port is noiseless. Okay, so the reason you need two of these is because you want to consider it needs to be valid obviously for all impedances and all sources and all loads and everything. And a simple case to see is, for example, if you look at short and open circuits at the input, right? Obviously, if you use an if you use a short circuit at the input, there is no source. Then all the noise current flows out, but the noise voltage produces an output. Okay? And if you consider an open circuit, the noise voltage does not produce any noise, but the noise current does produce some noise. So you want it to be valid across all range of imp uh, impedances. Okay? And the other thing in, you should know. Yes. Yes. We'll see. So what we'll do is we, that's what we're going to calculate. We're going to assume a very general case, okay? Completely general case where input has some noise and the two port has some EN and some IN, and we're going to calculate the uh, noise of the two port in some way, in in a particular fashion which is useful for us, okay? <coughs> In general, E n and I n can be correlated. Okay. Okay. Now, before that, we are also going to talk about something called noise factor. Has anybody heard this term before? Noise factor. So, it is represented by F. So, so it's, it, it is the ratio of the total output noise power okay, over actually output noise over output noise power due to source alone. Okay. So what does this mean? So if you take the output noise power due to source alone, you are neglecting En and In. 
okay you are just taking the transfer function of your uh, two port from input to output and the total output noise power considers both the source and the noise from the two port. So what does this represent? This represent in some fashion the amount of noise added by the two port. Is that clear? Okay. <clears throat> yes. So what we are going to do is, so the, to the total output noise power is due to you have noise in IS, noise in IN, noise in EN. Okay. The denominator neglects EN and IN and considers the noise at the output only due to IS. Is that clear to everybody? Okay. So in some sense you are trying to measure the degradation in SNR. Okay. So now let us see what uh, redraw it slightly. So we will just redraw it with the in input impedance of the two port. So now we are no longer at this point of time we are not interested in the signal itself. So we will represent IS as the noise current, noise current source of the uh, uh, noise current of the source. And this is your two port. And YN is the input admittance of the two port. Okay. What is the current flowing into the two port? The total noise current. So you can consider each one of these separately, okay, and you can arrive at a conclusion. So let's first do this. Is equals sorry, Is times y n over y n plus y s. <coughs> that is the current from Is plus. Now the you have. I n plus times okay. Remember you want to keep these two terms together because there is some correlation between the two. You do not want to separate them out as, uh, as of now. We will separate them out a little bit later. Okay. And of course, we are implicitly assuming that IS is not correlated with uh, EN or IN. Okay. So, what is F? So, IS squared plus sorry i n no, i keep doing this okay so total output power output noise power over noise power due to source alone. Why do you consider the same term? They are different sources but they are correlated which is why you need this. You cannot separate them out. Yeah, that is mod. Is that clear? Okay. So now what we are going to do is we are going to split I n okay, into two terms. So I n we will write it as I u plus I c. Okay. I u is the portion of, of, of the current noise which is not which is uncorrelated with E n. Okay. And IC is the portion which is completely correlated with EN.
So and then we are going to write, we know that IC is completely correlated with VN. So we are also going to write it in terms of some impedance YC. Okay, once it's correlated, you can write it in this form in this form. And YC is called the correlation admittance. Okay. So now we are just going to re rewrite this. We are going to write I n as I u plus I c in 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 this in this equation. Okay. And so I u is written separately, and we know I c is nothing but Y c times E n. So you can write it as this. Okay, is that clear? Okay. Now, what do we know about these two terms? Once you have split the current into correlated and uncorrelated, we know that IU is totally uncorrelated with EN. So now you can separate the modulus, separate the terms inside the modulus. Is that clear? Oops, let me write it on the next page. Easier. Okay. Actually, we should use a modulus because it's. <coughs> Okay, now we are going to define some impedances. We are going to define Rn, Gu, and Gs. Okay, what is Rn? Oops, sorry. So Rn is the is a fictitious impedance, okay, which produces the same noise as that produced by En. Okay. Similarly, GU is IU over 4 KT delta F. Sorry, this should all be squared. Okay, and GS stands for the is I S squared over 4 K T delta F. Okay, is that clear to everyone? So we are just representing each one of these noise sources by some impedance. Okay, so now we can write F in terms of these impedances. Okay, of course, 4K delta F is a common term for all of these. So, I U squared is going to have a G U term. Is that clear? Okay, so now obviously okay. So R N G U G S are all real, but Y C and Y S in general maybe you know may have a real part and an imaginary part. Okay, they are just admittances. Okay, so we are going to write Y C equals G C plus J B C. Is that clear to everyone? Okay. So now let's put this back into the expression for F.
Okay, what is mod of yc plus ys whole squared? Now you can now you can write it without you know. <clears throat> you can remove the modulus and write it as gc plus gs whole squared plus. over gs is that clear okay so what you see is if you have any two port any noisy two port its noise can be characterized by four parameters what are they gu gc bc and rn Okay, obviously GS and uh, BS come from the source. It's not part of this uh, two port. Yes. No, it is the same GS. So it is this GS which produces noise from the from, for the source. Yeah, the real part of it is what produces noise. The real part of the source is what produces the noise. Of the source, right? So it is the same GS. Okay. So now, what do we want to do? We want to typically in any circuit we want to minimize noise. Okay. So let's run a minimization uh, uh, this thing on us, right? So let's look at the minimum of this function. So you have written f in terms of these functions. Okay, so now what the how are we going to optimize it? What can you do? Okay, so let's go back to the two port. Okay, where is this? Uh, let's go back to this two port. What can you do to this two port to minimize noise? Obviously, you don't want to change. You can't change the two port. Okay, and the source itself cannot be changed. IS and YS themselves cannot be changed. But what you can do is find out conditions for how you would connect these two. Okay. You, you you can for example for maximum power transfer we found out that you can put a uh, you can put an impedance matching circuit which converts the impedance okay in this case we are going to find the uh, find what we can do to the source impedance okay to match it for optimum noise is that clear okay let's first apply this condition Let's find out the imaginary part. <coughs> so obviously all of these are zero. Sorry. Okay. So what does this mean? Okay. We want to find out BS, right? This is your optimum B. Okay. So if you start off with a susceptance BS of the source, you want to convert it to a susceptance which is minus of BC, which is similar to what you do do for maximum power transfer. Okay. So that is similar. Okay. So let's do the second one. We'll do dou F over dou GS equals zero. So what does this give you? Okay. So obviously the first two terms are gone. This is <coughs> two into GC plus GS over GS. Okay. Plus or okay in this case now we are going to differentiate the denominator. So you get minus one over GS squared. And actually, you have the GU term also. Okay. And if you do this, what this gives you is 
g squared is g over r n plus g c squared. Very easy to come. Just multiply and uh, multiply by g squared over r n throughout. Okay, you'll you'll get this very. It's a very straightforward calculation. Okay, so. So G S is root of this is your G optimum. Okay, so what does this mean? So if you if you convert your source impedance to G opt and B opt. That means here. That means that your f, which is your noise factor, will be minimum, right? So let's try sticking these back into f and find out what f min is. So you have one plus so G C plus G op whole squared plus. Actually, this is also G op. Okay. So, what do you know about this? This is, of course, zero. That's your one of your conditions. <coughs> okay. So, let's also plug in one more condition, which is for G u. So, we know that G u is from this, right? What is G u? It's G op square minus G C squared over R N, sorry, times R N. Okay, so we know this. You'll try to, you'll see if you'll find that you can come up with a very simple form for this. You can plug that back in there. Actually, one plus. Um, sorry. G op squared R n minus G C squared R n. Okay. Plus, let's expand this out. So R n plus two G op R n. Plus G op. So these two terms cancel each other out. <coughs> okay, and then you can combine terms. To simplify this a little bit further, so obviously you can cancel out this also. G op with this G op, the square and the square. Okay, what does this leave you with? One plus R n. R n is a common term to all of them, right? R n times two G C plus two G op. Right? Okay. So in other words, it is one plus two R n okay, so this is the expression for F min for the two pole. 
okay so we are we have basically written it in terms of those four parameters which we wanted to okay r and gc gu those are the important ones okay so now let's look at the let's try to rewrite it slightly differently also the general f in terms of f min okay now that we found out f min we'll find that f for any general case can be written in terms of this f min okay okay so what did we know so let's uh, move to the next section so this is okay we know this we know that g of squared is g u over r n plus g c squared and we know so we know these three conditions okay using these three let's try to put it inside uh, uh, the expression for f and find out what happens so effectively of, of course f so effectively what we are saying is to get this optimum we are going to use some kind of matching circuit right first of all so this is y s so let's say this is i s so this is what we are saying okay so we are going to optimize put some matching network so this is a noise matching network okay we are going to do this so let's find out the f in terms of the optimum point okay so we know gu right so we know gu in terms of g opt okay so let's put that in that first know what's happening to cause this to come up pop up okay so what do we know we know gu is g op squared minus gc squared times rn okay so that's what we are putting putting that up here and now rn obviously becomes a common factor for this also okay g op squared minus gc squared Is that right? Plus, sorry. Okay. So g of squared minus g c squared plus let's expand this out plus g c squared plus plus do oh sorry forgot the g s here okay. So these two guys cancel each other out.
okay and then what we'll do is we'll add and subtract because we have g squared g opt squared we'll add and subtract 2 gs g opt okay to bring it to the form which we want which is 1 plus so we've added 2 gs g opt we also have 2 gc gs so we get this term okay plus Is that okay? So all we did was add two GS GC uh, two G of GS. What do you recognize about this term? Does anybody recognize this term? What is this? Let's go back a couple of pages. What is F min? <clears throat> right? Sorry. Actually, me uh, small mistake here because should of course include this also. Close the one also, right? So this portion is F min. Is that clear? You have a question? It's GC plus G opt. So you have a 2 GC GS here. Okay. So what we did was. Okay. So what we did was. Uh, let me put it in a different color. So we added. Two G of G S and we subtracted two G of G S. Okay, so the minus two G of G S went with G of squared plus G S squared to give you this term. Okay, the other one plus two G of G S with plus two G C G S becomes two G C plus G of times G S. Right, the mathematics is pretty straightforward. Okay, so what? Why did we do this? What you notice is. Obviously, if GS is equal to G opt and BS equals B opt, F is F min. We already know that. Okay, but in case for other reasons you are not able to match exactly for noise. Okay, what you find is these are actually this is the equation of a circle. If your GS and BS are variable, okay. So if you plot this out, so you have an F min point, and depending on how closely you match, so this is your F min point, but you can draw circles F min plus 0.1 dB, F min plus 0.2 dB, and so on. Okay. Okay, so you can draw what are called these are called noise circles. So you may you may not be able to match exactly to F min because what you'll notice in general is the condition for noise match is not the same as condition for power match. Okay, 
So there is definitely a trade-off between the two. Is that clear? Because the condition for power transfer is very simple. You just want to make GC, uh, you know, YS equals YN, right? Which is, uh, sorry, not YS equals YN. You want to make GS equals uh, uh, GN, right? And BS equals minus BN. So that's the condition for maximum power transfer. Whereas this condition is actually slightly different. Okay. And in fact, if you draw it on a Smith chart, turns out you will get these circles also. Okay. Sure, of course, of course, definitely, definitely, because uh, uh, it, it is definitely okay. So it is it is a narrow band match in some sense because the impedances you are trying to match with may not may vary over frequency also, right? If that is the case, yeah, it could be a frequency dependent match. Okay. So, okay. So we understood that. Okay. So the other thing you can define is something called yes. Yes. We are going to do next class. So the reason we are doing all this. Okay, because we looked at impedance match, power match first, then we are looking at noise match. Next class, we will look at what are the two port parameters for a MOSFET. Okay, so you can actually calculate any two port you get. It's actually fairly easy, right? You find out the input referred noise, right? Input referred noise, uh, current and noise uh, voltage. Then you automatically know what YC and other things are. Okay, if, if those two are not correlated, YC is zero. In general, we notice that if you remember for a MOSFET, your gate noise, you, you have what? Gate noise, flicker noise, thermal noise. Okay. So you take all these three at the input, refer it as voltage and current. Okay. And if, if you remember, I told you yesterday that your gate noise is actually correlated to your drain current noise. Okay. So what happens is you will find a correlation coefficient between the two. And therefore, there will be a, in, in general for a MOSFET, there will be a YC. Okay. So the way we'll proceed to to an LNA is we'll find out the two port parameters for a uh, for an LNA, okay? The the two port uh, noise parameters, okay? And then we'll go from that to the match. So we'll then we'll find out how you can match it to for power for 50 ohms, okay? In general, when you do your design, you'll be doing somewhere between the two. It won't be an exact noise match. It won't be an exact power match. That's right. Okay, some other general points. So you, are, you also you can also define something called a noise figure, which is <coughs> your in in dB. First of all, okay. Yes, in circles. Yeah, it should have been N N NFmin. That's right. It should have been NFmin. So it's uh, yeah, you're right. Hey, we have another student in class. Okay. Okay. So this is your noise figure in dB. Okay. Then you can also define something called noise temperature. Okay, which is Tn. So this is defined as the increase in temperature of Ys, okay, which is the source impedance, to account for the noise generated by the two port itself. Okay, and your reference is taken as room temperature, which is 290K. Okay. <laughs> so the definition of Tn is the noise temperature is the noise increase from your re reference temperature 
so that ys accounts for the noise produced by the two port also okay so if if let's say you are able to increase the noise of uh, increase the temperature of the system of the source okay so now the noise from ys will obviously increase okay so you increase it by enough te temperature such that you no longer have to use en and ym those noises are incorporated inside ys itself through an increase in temperature okay so no to, couple of other things to note i think uh, i didn't cover this when we did this uh, um, earlier in class let's go go back here to uh, where we define noise factor okay first of all note that if you have a noiseless two port noiseless network f is 1 right f is 1 and your noise figure is 0 db okay so that is something to know second thing is obviously if f is 1 <coughs> what is tn 0 kelvin okay and that also makes sense because if you don't have any noise at all then yeah the increase in temperature is zero okay and uh, the other thing to note is if you use tn right you'll find that if you use temperature it actually noise temperature it actually gives you slightly more resolution than if you just use noise factor or noise uh, noise figure okay because obviously because now you're you can uh, you can if the noise increases by a little bit right if your noise factor increases by 0.01 or 0.02 your temperature may increase by 1 or 2 kelvin so it actually gives you a little bit more resolution so you may use it when you are very close to your f, uh, f min is that clear okay let's stop here and um, tomorrow we'll look at what happens when you have a cascade of um, if, if you have a cascaded system what happens is a noise figure and then we'll go on from there okay we'll look at a noise figure of some systems and circuits